One of the problems with running an online business or being in business for yourself, especially if you work by yourself without a team, is you lose perspective really quickly. You can get so obsessed with the marketing, the sales copy, the tactic, the analytics, or your latest YouTube video, whatever it is, that you lose sight of the essence of what makes you and your brand so special and appealing to your target market. So in order to help myself do this, I have to reflect and self-assess and get back to the core of what I do. And what I've done is put together a few questions that help me out to do this, and I wanna share them with you today. Five questions in particular that I think you should be asking yourself every single day to stay on target. If you ask yourself these five questions and then act on the answers that you come up with, I promise you, your business is gonna grow. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 87 of the Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Pumped to hang out with you. It's Christmas this week. I don't know if you celebrate Christmas, but if you do, Merry Christmas. Uh, I hope you're with people you love. I hope you're healthy. I hope you are safe. Uh, what a strange year this has been. I'm going to wrap some of it up next week as we get to the uh, the, the new year. We're almost there. Um, but man, it has been a wild ride. I, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, um, thank you for supporting me this year. Uh, so many of you started to tune in during lockdowns, during uh, quarantines, all kinds of stuff. Um, and not only have you been tuning in, listening to the podcast, watching the YouTube channel, but you have been diving in in the YouTube comments. And there's been so much good discussion. I was just literally reading a YouTube comment just, just before I got on this episode uh, where I was talking about the mastermind principle a couple of weeks ago. And someone mentioned that they, they've they been trying to start a mastermind, they feel alone. And then someone commented in the comments to their comment and replied said, I'll start a mastermind with you. So there, this is the kind of people that are following this show and this channel, it means so much to me. The, the caliber of people is so encouraging, so um, generous, so positive. In a year of negativity, there has been so much positivity on this channel. So it is refreshing. Just so you know, from a guy that's been making YouTube videos for 11 years, who's been blogging for 11 years, I have dealt with my fair share of trolls and angry people that can't stand my hair or my shirt or my religion or my voice or my opinions or whatever it is, and they wanna start fights. And that is not happening here. It's insane. You are an incredible group of people and I'm so, so grateful for you. So I just wanna say thank you. Um, that's my Christmas gift to you because you've been a gift to me. Uh, I got a great episode for you today. Before we dive in, though, I want to put a resource in your hand. If, if this is the first time you've ever caught one of these shows uh, and you're looking to start something new in the new year, you're like, look, I want to start my online business. I've been learning about it. I, I, I get it. Online courses, I get it. Lead magnets. Okay, I'm hearing about this stuff. Email marketing. How does it all fit together? What do I do first, second, third, fourth, all that kind of stuff? I want to give you the best material I could possibly give you, and it's my passive income workshop. This is, this is a 45-minute training. I've put together a class. I'm giving it to you for free. It's going to walk you through four key components of passive income, the best tools to use for them, literally templates and scripts you can copy from the workshop uh, and put them all together so that you can create your first $1,000 a month of recurring passive income, even if you only have get this 30 minutes a day. Now, if you have more time, I think that's great, but you can put this into practice even if you only have 30 minutes a day. It is some great teaching. I want you to have it. Go watch it. It's free. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash workshop. I'm going to link to it below here in the video as well, grahamcochran.com slash workshop. If you have some time off this holiday season, if you have an hour in between you know, eggnog and cinnamon rolls and opening presents and Charlie Brown Christmas or whatever you do, Handel's Messiah, those are all things that happen in my house. If in between whatever your tradition is, um, or just a weekend, you have some time to yourself, and it's not Christmas, and you're watching this to listen to this down the road, if you got 45 minutes, you got an hour, go watch this workshop. It'll 
blow your mind. It'll help you. It is tactical. It's in-depth. And it's free. GrahamCochran.com slash workshop. Okay. Let's get into the questions. Um, and and I, I do work alone. So I have... I mentioned this at the top of the episode. I mean, if you have a team, this helps. I think just physically being around other people or even having to show up on virtual meetings if your team is remote is beneficial. Um, I have somewhat of a team. I have an assistant who helps me out with customer service and email and and content posting. And I've got uh, a marketing director on the Recording Evolution. And so we we work together on stuff. Uh, I have a community manager, um, uh, my marketing director works with a copywriter at times on some of the stuff for the Recording Revolution. So I've got a bit of a team, but I don't have a ton of interaction. And for the first four or five years of my business, it was just me. Um, and it's still largely just me sitting alone here, you know, <laughs> at the office. There's nobody here. And while I am an introvert, and while I am self disciplined and a self starter, and so I, I can function very well alone. I lose perspective of my business very quickly. And what I lose is I lose the essence of what what is it that people like about my brand? What what is it that makes my product special? Like I can get so distracted and think that, oh, it's, you know, it's this or it's that or it's this angle or I can lose perspective quickly what the true positioning is of my brand. This is one reason why I talked about the mastermind principle a couple of weeks ago. Being in a mastermind, having other people around you, giving you perspective is really, really helpful. But even if you have a mastermind, or if you don't, you can ask yourself five simple questions that will put you back into like the space of like, okay, this is what matters. This is what matters with my brand. Because you have to really understand what you're selling, what you're offering, what people care about, uh, in order to move product, connect with your audience, and grow. So these questions are designed to help you do two things. One, better connect with your audience. So, so important. We do content online. We're audience builders first. It's the only way we're going to have a platform to sell anything to, whether it's a course, a membership, a mastermind, coaching, a retreat, a book, an in-person event, speaking engagement, whatever you want to sell. It doesn't matter you need an audience, right? So audience building is one of the most important things we do week in and week out. So connecting with your audience is one of the primary uh, functions of these questions. And then really understanding your offer, like what you're really offering with, with pinpoint accuracy and clarity so that when you talk about your product, so that when you present, so that when you write sales copy, you connect with your audience on what really matters to them and what your product really brings to the table so that they're like, ah, oh, I want this, I wanna buy. Otherwise, you're just filling in random sales copy words or maybe it, even you're doing something like copying someone's sales copy. Like I have people that copy my sales copy thinking it's going to help them sell their product. It doesn't make any sense. My audience is not your audience. My words are not your words. So you want to really understand yourself and your audience to better connect, to better sell. So that's the setup. Does that make sense? Okay, real quick, we're going to go through these five questions, write them down, and then refer back to them. Ask yourself these questions every single day. You're going to get so much clarity on who you are, why you're here, how you're here to help your audience, and you're going to sell more product. Question number one, what pain am I solving? What pain am I solving? In your free weekly content, in your blog post each week, what pain are you solving? In your podcast, what pain are you solving? In your video, what pain are you solving? Now, I know each each piece of content is going to be solving something specific. You might dial into something, but zoom out. You know, the homepage of your website. What What's your headline? What's your subheadline? Like, what pain do you solve? Are you a fitness instructor? What pain do you solve? Oh, I help people lose weight. Okay. That is a pain. But what's the pain under that pain? Why do people want to lose weight? Can you can you get to the pain below that pain? Oh, well, um, people want to lose weight maybe because they feel unattractive. Maybe they feel like they can't they can't get a, a, a spouse because they feel unattractive because of their weight. Maybe they are married and they feel insecure and unattractive and it's harming their intimacy with their spouse. 
Ooh, that's heavy. That's a pain. Maybe they want to lose weight, which is a pain because they're unhealthy and they're in their mid-40s and they have young kids at home and they're afraid that they might drop dead because of their, their weight, because of their unhealth. And they don't want to leave their spouse and kids fatherless or motherless. Whew, that's a pain. You see, you see how we, we got real deep real quick? Do you know the pain that you're solving? For this brand, there's a few different pains, right? I'm teaching online business. So the surface pain might be, oh, I'm having a hard time launching an online business, or I don't know how to sell more of my online courses, or I don't know what I need to get started with my online business. Okay, that's a pain. But what's the pain underneath those pains that I'm solving? I want to wake up and live a life of freedom. I hate that I'm trapped in my nine to five job, or I'm trapped in a business that I created that requires 70 hours a week of my time. I can't get away from my laptop or my phone when I go on vacation. I don't have the money to fully live the way I want to live. I hate what I do. I feel like I'm meant for more. I'm tormented by my lack of uh, impact in the world. Well, these are These are bigger pains than just I want to start an online business and I find it confusing or frustrating, right? So, do you know what pain you're solving? Sometimes for many of us, it is we're in a business be, that we are or were our target market. So you can ask this, the follow-up question to that. This is still question one. What was my pain that I learned how to solve? What was your pain? If you're a fitness instructor, going back to that example, did you struggle with weight? Were, were you overweight? Were you unhealthy? And then you got disciplined and you figured out diet and exercise and sleep and recovery and you lost the weight, you got healthier, your cholesterol went down. Um, you had you know, a, a crazy story where you had cancer and you changed your diet and your cancer went away. I, like, What was your pain that you solved? That might get you closer to better understanding your prospect's pain. And you know this, you probably knew this when you started, but when you're tweaking the, the font on your website or you're you're swapping Kajabi themes for your product to see which one looks better. You know, like you're losing track of what really is your business. Your business isn't your font. It's not your website. It's not your Kajabi product. It's not your YouTube pay channel header. It's not what you tweeted. It's not what your Instagram grid looks like or your bio. None of that is your business. None of that's going to move the needle, right? But do you know what pain you're solving? Ask yourself that question every day. What pain am I solving? If you know that, you, there's no way you can't grow your business because if you can easily articulate your pain, or excuse me, the pain that your customer or audience is facing, they will listen to you. They will listen to you. Jay Abraham, one of the greatest salesmen of our time, he has a great book, by the way, called Getting Everything You Can Out of All That You've Got by Jay Abraham. Go read that. Let your mind be blown. Um, one of the greatest salesmen of our time. And one of the things he says in that book is, if you can better articulate your customer's pain or your prospect's pain or problem, if you can articulate that problem or pain better than your competitors, you win. They'll buy from you. If you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. There's so many brands shouting at you, buy my thing, buy my thing. On the online space, whether it's an ad or it's a YouTube video of someone just telling you how awesome they are and how awesome their courses are and whatever it is they're selling, like that's that's just it's just icky. And there's there's icky people in every niche. What if instead of talking about yourself and all how great you are, what if you talked about your your audience's pain and you addressed it, you addressed it in such clarity and detail that they said, Oh my Lord, she gets me. She is reading my mind. He knows what I'm struggling with. They lean in a little bit more. They pay attention a little bit more. They trust you. They like you. They respect you. They'll listen to what you have to say next. That's the first and most important question, I think, is what pain am I solving? Ready? Question number two to ask yourself every day is, what fears do my people deal with every day? Okay, this flows out of what pain, but what fears, what are they afraid of? What are they afraid of? I bet you know, but have you articulated that? Have you written that down? 
what, what are my people afraid of? What fears do they deal with every single day? These could be small fears. They could be big fears. It doesn't matter. Fear is powerful. So let's say in the recording revolution, my audience over there, they're musicians. They want to record their music and have it sound professional. One of the fears they have is that they will never, never be able to get a professional sounding mix of their song by themselves. So mixing is like the post-production, the 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 Photoshop of music. It's like, it's already been recorded, but now it's like tweaking it and, and polishing it up so it sounds, you know, magnifique, right? My ideal customer over there has started to understand that mixing is an important part of the music production process. And so they're learning from me, maybe from others, and they've, they've learned a lot of it. They're doing it. And it's a complicated process to, to get it really, really good. And so if you're new to it, you're not going to be great. It takes time. So if they've done some mixing, and they followed all my steps. One of the fears they might have is that I know all the stuff, I'm doing all the things, but it doesn't sound like it should. And I'm afraid that it will just never sound professional, that maybe I'm just not cut out for this. So I am aware of this fear. What this leads me to do is try to speak to that fear and encourage the heck out of them and tell them the truth that, look, if you have learned how to mix and you're doing it and it doesn't sound good, the truth is it takes time. It really, uh, there's no shortcut to getting good at it. Even if you know all the information, even if you've taken my mixing course, Mixing University, it's not enough. You have to take time and do a lot of mixing. And so I speak to that fear. I address it, which tells them that I know that, that I know them, that I know their fears. And I try to encourage them. What fears can you address that your people deal with every day? Which leads to question number three, which is, how can I encourage my audience today? I want you to be asking that every day, and I want you to be doing that every day. There is a, a big misunderstanding from people that get into online business. So they, they see the model, their, their eyes are open to online courses, especially people who are in service-based businesses. They see online courses, they see how you can scale your income real quick, and they're like, holy crap, I need online courses. So they get it, and they think it's just simple. Great information, package the right way, slick sales copy, get an audience, you'll sell. And that's all they want to do is sell, sell, sell. And then it's true for anybody that gets into this business. They see people like me talking about how much money you can make and how easy it is and blah, blah, blah. And they think it's as simple as get the audience, get the product, put it in front of them, a percentage is going to buy and you'll be set. What a lot of people don't see, because it's hidden, I try to talk about it a lot, is the secret to doing really, really well in business, no matter what kind of business it is, is to connect with your audience. We're personality driven. We're not corporate. This is not a brand. Like literally my business is called Graham Cochran LLC, but even the recording revolution, right? It's connection. It's, it's, it's me in a video. It's, it's, or, or my guests in a video, I guess educators in a video, like connecting, like real people are on the other side of the camera. The, the, the people that you're seeing on YouTube, the people that you're hearing in a podcast, they're the people making the product. It's personality driven, which is a great thing. Not that you have to be a certain type of personality, but it's human, right? It's human. So you have an opportunity that a corporation struggles with, like they have whole PR firms to try to help with this. You have an opportunity to be a human and encourage your followers, whether they're customers or not, every single day. If you can encourage them, you're gonna win. So I bake in encouragement into everything I do. Every single tutorial I do, every single podcast I do, every single product I have, even the welcome videos of my products. They've already bought something. They've already given me money. I've already closed the deal. The course is amazing. I spend six to 10 minutes in a welcome video to any of my courses encouraging you. like. You're so smart for buying this course. You're so smart for joining this course. You're gonna have so much fun. This is gonna help you. Hey, you can do this. You can do this. So the secret to becoming an effective teacher, and I've had to learn this through trial and error because I have no formal education when it comes to, to educating. But I've learned through trial and error that, again, it's not about conveying information. Yes, you need to learn how to communicate and you need to learn how to break up information so you're not giving too much or too little or in, a, in a, a random roundabout way, you have to learn the skill of communication. That is one of the skills. The other skill though, that's huge, 
is empowerment and encouragement. So I don't just want to teach you how to start a business or how to grow a business or how to write sales copy. With the recording revolution, I don't want to just teach you how to record vocals that sound like Taylor Swift or how to get a kick drum sound that sounds huge. That's just information transfer. Anybody who knows what they're talking about and can communicate half decently can do that. The secret sauce is making the other person that you're teaching believe that they can actually do what you're teaching them to do. The reason this is powerful is twofold, maybe threefold. Number one, if they don't believe they can do it, they're not going to do it. So you're not really helping them. You can be like, look, I've told you the 10 steps to becoming a millionaire. Just do the 10 steps. It's really easy. We have empirical data. Like You could give them all the data in the world. But if they don't believe that it's possible for them, they're not going to do it. So you've not really helped them. You've just given them some facts. There's just too many facts going around. Facts don't change people's lives. Right? You have to empower somebody to believe even just a little bit that they can do it for them to actually get the results they want. So that it's so important for them to get the results. Two, if you make them believe they can do it and then they go do it, guess what happens? Ho ho, you're their new best friend. Dude, Graham taught me how to write sales copy better. I, I went and did it. I sold more of my product. Oh, this guy's great. I love this guy. When that happens, I've got a student for life, even if it's not a paid student. I've got your loyalty, support, respect. You're going to tell other people to follow my stuff, listen to my podcast, watch my YouTube videos. I have people who have never bought anything from me who tell other people to buy stuff from me. So they're my biggest referrals, and they haven't even bought anything from me. It's kind of backwards if you think about it, but it's great word of mouth advertising because they're bought in. They're bought in. Why? Not because I gave them great information, but because I encouraged them just enough to take action on the information that they went out and got some transformation, some results of their own. When people get results, even a little teeny thing, oh, that's so powerful because now they're motivated to go out there and do it. And, and then they're, they're going to change their own lives. I can't change your life, but I can set you up to change your own life by empowering and encouraging you. Do you see how powerful this is? Encouragement is is insanely powerful, especially today. There's so little encouragement out there. I don't know what happened. The internet used to be a fun, wonderful place where you could learn about things and connect with people from all over the world. And then you'd hear a little sound of, you've got mail. And you'd feel warm fuzzies would fill your, your body. If, if you're too young to know what AOL is, then too bad. But the internet was a fun place. Now the internet is a dark, cold, scary, angry, confusing, conspiracy theory, laden place where you don't even really want to go, but you kind of need to go because you need Uber Eats or you want to listen to Graham's amazing new podcast because it's really good. Wink. So the internet, so it's a rough place. It's a rough place. I want to take the internet back. I want to take the internet back to late 1999 when it was still a happy, awesome place. And I can't do that completely, but what I can do is infuse some encouragement, some joy, some motivation into every piece of content I deliver so that I'm not just another talking head giving you facts, I'm not just another talking head just bragging about how awesome I am, how you can be awesome like me. I want this moment, these few minutes you hang out with me each week to be a dose of encouragement, like a shot of empowerment to the veins so that you walk away feeling a little bit better about yourself because it's a dark world out there. I'm trying to like literally, like, like Jesus has let my light shine, right? I want to literally light up a dark place. So ask yourself the same question. How can I encourage my audience today? If you can get good at encouragement, you win. You win. People will love you. They'll buy from you. That's question number three. How can I encourage my audience today? Question number four, staying on that, that theme of humanity. What, this is going to be harder for you, maybe. Some of you, not so much. For people like me, harder. What current struggle can I share with my people to show them that I too am human? What happens when you turn on a microphone and you talk? What happens when you turn on the camera and you talk? What happens when you bust out your laptop and you type? You seem like the expert. You seem like the guru. You seem like the person who has arrived. You've scaled the mountaintop. 
you've come back down the mountain, and now you're looking at all these helpless chaps down here at the base of the mountain who are looking up, wishing they could be up there, and you can see, you're saying, hey, come with me, my friend. I've scaled the mountaintop. It is glorious up there. I've seen the view. I know the way, and I can bring you up there. Hey, first of all, that is what you're doing, by the way, and it's a beautiful metaphor. You've been there before, helping people get somewhere where you've been, right? You can't take somebody somewhere where you haven't been. We talked about that a few weeks ago. So you're bringing them where you've been. You're helping them. You're the guide. And you're helping them get up a mountain that they feel is impossible. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. The problem, though, is that people start to believe that you're larger than life, that you don't struggle like they do. Worse, you might start to believe that you don't struggle. It depends on your personality. It really is personality driven. Some of you might think literally that you are the bee's knees and you don't have struggles. Some of you know your struggles. Most of you know you have a struggle. We all struggle. Some of you don't feel like you have struggles, but you do. You just need to get in, in touch with your inner struggle. It's there. <laughs> um, but most of us struggle, but then what we do is we cover up the struggle. We don't want people to think that we struggle for two reasons. One, nobody, nobody likes that. I mean, very few of us like airing out our dirty laundry or sharing our insecurities or fears personally, like online. Like It just doesn't feel good for most of us. Although it is cathartic, it does feel good when you do. But most of us, that's not our natural default. And then two, we've believed this lie that, well, if I'm going to sell a course or I'm going to try to grow an audience, I, I have to look like I have it all together. If I, if I share that I'm struggling with something, it makes me look like I don't have it all together. Why will they buy from me? And I don't know where that comes from, but it must come from the insecurity, the imposter syndrome that we deal with anyway. Who am I to be doing this? You know? Uh, so I, I I think it comes from somewhere, but it's there. And so what we can do, many of us, is keep it all zipped up and tidy. And I think that that actually worked for a period of time. I mean, there was five decades where thought leaders, authors, motivational speakers, um, any kind of educator or guru um, always looked put together and polished. They would show up on stage in front of 10,000 people. They'd have their audio program that was curated. They would be on a, a radio show. They'd have a book. I mean, they all sound like they have it all together. What's cool about social media, what's cool about you know modern content platforms like YouTube or uh, you know Facebook or Lives or is that you can be more real. And since we've got more of that, we're used to more of that, we now trust that more than we trust the slick polished. And so what I'm here to tell you is the more you share your struggles, the more it shows that you're human, the more that you show that you're human, the more your people will trust you. The more they trust you, the more they're gonna buy from you. They don't need you to be, you know, one step below God, you know? They don't need you to be flawless. People wanna follow real people, people that they can respect, people that they can identify with. I don't feel like I am the greatest anything, you know? But it's interesting, when I talk to my students, uh, especially some of my star students, the ones that are doing the biggest things, who've spent the most money with me, like they're like the cream of the crop students. And these are people that I think are doing big things that I'm super impressed with. It's interesting to hear why they are in my membership or my mastermind or buy my course or follow my stuff. I hear them say things like, I've seen where you were and where you've gotten. I've seen what you've accomplished. And I know that you're a real person and I see myself in you. You inspire me. Not because you have it all together. They're not saying that you inspire me because of your struggle, your story of struggle in the past. So part of sharing your struggle is to share your past struggle. That's important too. That's one reason why I talk about how I started my business in the last global recession. Economic collapse, 2009. It was a really, really bad time for anybody. And I had no clue what I was doing. I was on food stamps for 18 months because I had hardly any money. And I sat in my office every day not knowing what the heck I was doing with a mortgage to pay and a baby to feed and a wife to take care of and no clue as to how I was going to make a living. I share that story as often as I can because it shows that I, I struggled. There was two years of just self-doubt and struggle before I had anything of note of like, okay, everything's going to be okay. And then from there, it really, really grew. That's important. Share your past struggle, but don't just land there. Share your current struggle. Share whatever you're really struggling with, a struggle in your business, something that didn't work very well. Um, just air your frustrations. This is something I have to do a better job of, to be honest. 
One of my struggles is that I don't share my struggles well enough. How deep is that, right? But when you do this, you, you create a human connection. They respect you. If they're watching your content, following your content, they know you've achieved great things. They want what you have. Be more human. They will trust you even more. Be human in your sales copy. Be human in your podcast. Be human in your YouTube video. Be human in your membership or community. Be a human helping another human achieve great things. If you can do that, you'll be indispensable in the marketplace. So that's question four. What current struggle can I share with my people to show them that I too am human? And fifth and final question to ask yourself every day to explode your business growth. And I stole this from one of my buddies, Justin Keller. What promise can I make and deliver every time? What promise can I make and deliver every time? And this is in context of your branding, your positioning. So on your website, in your content, you, you know, you help people solve a certain pain. You help people achieve a certain desired result in general with all of your content. But what I want you to think about is what is a promise you can make to them that you can actually deliver every time? Because if you think about it, there's a lot of promises you could make that you can't really deliver because you can't control what the other person does. So for example, in the recording revolution, I cannot control whether the person that I'm teaching how to record music is talented, has written a good song, will implement what I teach. I can't promise them a specific result like that, but I can promise them the secret to making radio ready songs. I give out a six step guide to radio ready songs. I can promise them that I will break down every major song you've ever heard on the radio into the six steps that you have to go through to get the best sounding song possible. I can promise clarity and simplicity when it comes to music production. Make it simple. I make it clear. I do something very similar here with my business content. I can't promise you you'll make a certain amount of money, but I can promise you to show you the model that can easily create a six-figure, seven-figure, automatic income stream. I can promise you that. I can promise you how to simplify your business so you don't have to do a bunch of stuff. I can promise you that you can save a bunch of time. I promise. I can promise you that you can grow your business and work less. That's one of the taglines or part of the tagline of the show, helping you grow your online business or build your online business and work less. I can promise you both of those things so that you can live and give more. I can promise you both of those things too. Partly because they're somewhat open-ended. How you define living and giving more is up to you. Growing your online business, working less. Again, it's not a specific amount of money necessarily that I promise you're going to have. It's not a certain number of hours I promise you're going to work. But I'm giving you the tools that I know can deliver these things. And I'm, I'm teaching it to you. I'm giving it to you clearly. So if you stop and think about what you offer and what you teach and what you share, what promise or promises can you make and deliver every time that are simple, that are clear, that so people get, man, if I follow her, this is what she's promising. This is what she can help me with. They don't have to be earth shattering, but clarity is important here. Does that make sense? Get clear on what you're promising and what you're delivering. So again, my buddy, Justin Keller, um, Fight for Brilliance is his podcast. You should go check it out. Um, the Fight for Brilliance podcast, Justin Keller. But what promise can I make and deliver every time? It's just a great branding question. He's a branding expert. I love how he thinks about stuff. So there you go. Those are the five questions. If you've never asked yourself any of these questions or all of them, here's what I suggest you do. Sit down sometime in the next week. Give yourself 60 minutes. Give yourself an hour. Sit down with a piece of paper or Google Doc or your phone, however you like to to notate things and ask yourself these five questions and come up with an answer, at least one answer for each one. That's it. Just give yourself 10 minutes for each question. You know, a few minutes to just quiet your mind, breathe, think about it, and then 10 minutes to answer each question. It may, it may not take you an hour, but it might take you an hour. But block off an hour to answer these questions. I promise you, this as an exercise, even as a one-time exercise, my goodness, will give you so much clarity for your branding, your website copy, your sales copy, what kind of content to make. I mean, just those five questions alone 
could be five types of videos or podcasts or blog posts that you talk about. You could just bullet out like four pains that you're solving, and those are four different videos you're going to do. Four fears your people deal with, you can talk, speak to those. That's four videos you can do. Four things you can encourage your audience with, those are four videos. Four current struggles that you're dealing with that you can share uh, to show that you're human. Four promises that you can make and deliver every time. I mean, that's 20 pieces of content if you did four for each right there. That's a half a year of content if you do something every week. I mean, the possibilities are endless from one sit down with these questions. But if you ask yourself these questions or at least one of these questions every day, you will stay dialed in to what really matters in your business, what you really have to offer. None of the marketing mumbo jumbo will get in the way. None of the features of your course or your membership will get in the way of what really people buy. They're not buying marketing speak. They're not buying features. They're buying you. They're buying pains being solved. They're buying fears being you know uh, addressed. They're buying encouragement. They're buying connection with another flawed human. They're buying promises. Does that make sense? So powerful. So let me, I would be curious to know which of these five questions like do you think has the most potential for you to get clarity over your business or as you were listening to the questions gave you the most immediate clarity of what to, to dial in in your business? Which of the five questions resonated with the most? Leave me a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, email me or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Let me know. I'd be curious to know what connected with you. And if you, again, if you've got some time and you want to go through, even if you've already set up your online business, but you need a refresher, go through my, my passive income workshop. Ask yourself these questions as you go through the workshop because it really ties in nicely. You need to have these questions answered to really implement the four steps in the workshop well to create passive income in your online business. It's a free 45-minute workshop, a bunch of didactic training, super helpful, super valuable. Again, it's absolutely free, which is insane, but I put it together, some of my best material for you so you have access to it. It doesn't cost you a dime. You don't have to pay me for anything, uh, but I think you'll get a lot out of it. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash workshop. I'm gonna link to it below here on YouTube. And uh, as always, thanks for hanging out with me. It means a ton. You're the best. Merry Christmas. If I haven't already uh, wished you Merry Christmas, and if this is no longer Christmas, then I hope you're just having a great regular day. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you on another episode real soon. Mm-hmm.